And welcome to the Global UAV CEO Interviews. With me on the line now is Mike Byrne, CEO of Global UAV Technologies. Mike, how are you? Hi, Trevor. Great, thanks. Thanks for, uh, for setting this up again. So we had some pretty big news that we uh, released earlier this morning regarding Global UAV uh, being able to test beyond visual line of sight capabilities uh, in Alberta. Can you discuss the process Global UAV followed to get to this point? Yeah, absolutely. This is really a, a landmark uh, step for our company. It, it's significant for a number of reasons, but uh, most notably because it, it's not something that every company is able to do. And, and this really speaks to our regulatory compliance uh, division, but also our, our operating history, our safety record, and how we operate as a company uh, under the, the current regulatory framework put out by Transport Canada. So the approval is required to, to obtain a, a special flight operating certificate to allow for BV LOS testing in the foremost range or in, in one of the test ranges within Canada. It, it's a fairly rigorous process to obtain that and we are successful in it uh, through the hard work of, of uh, the folks at our uh, regulatory compliance division. Mm -hmm. uh, they really pulled a lot of weight to, to help make this happen, so it's a, it was a great step for the company. So the BV law certification you know, might be one of the most important catalysts for global UAV, specifically for its investors, the shareholders, but also management as well. And even though that official approval from Transport Canada is still being reviewed, why is testing BV loss operations so important to the company and the industry? That's right. So, so there's an important distinction here. Uh, the special flight operating certificate that we have currently allows us to fly beyond visual line of sight at one of the test ranges, the Formos Alberta test range in Canada. Uh, in, in part of that process to obtaining beyond visual line of flight certification to fly within uh, other airspace in the country is to first be able to to successfully fly at, at a test range and and go through. Uh, go through the process there and, and complete the steps. So uh, part of the testing that we'll be doing is for our own research and development for different types of technologies that we're working on. Uh, the other side will be to demonstrate the abilities of our system, demonstrate things like radio link and radio strength uh, and connection with the, with the drone at distance. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is working with Formos and working with Transport Canada to go through a, a flight testing plan that will allow us to check all the boxes to hopefully step into that uh, approval for flight down you know, in the future, being able to fly in, in other airspace in Canada beyond visual line of sight. Sure. But for now, it's focused on the test range in Alberta. Mike, just out of curiosity, what is the furthest distance that the uh, Procyon might be able to fly in that test range? Yeah, that's a really good question. It, it, it all depends on what we're doing with it. You know, if you look at the peer specs on the system, uh, it'll fly for around an hour, just under an hour, at anywhere up to 20, 25 meters per second. Uh, at these, at these speeds, we can, we can cover around 40 kilometers or so. So we can, we can cover a significant amount of distance out and back. But that's typically not the type of, of flight profile that these systems are used for, especially in survey work. So it, it's a very capable system. It definitely has a range and endurance to warrant this type of testing with it. So it's actually an ideal platform. And one of the other things that's unique about it, um, compared to other fixed-wing platforms of its type, which require a runway and prepared surface to take off and land from, uh, we're able to carry quite heavy payloads with the Procyon. Uh, long distances and at high speeds. So th this is really significant compared mm -hmm. to a lot of old, other multi-copters. Uh, you know, multi-copter platforms are quite limited in their range. Fixed-wing platforms get very large if you want to put large payloads on them. So the helicopter is really an ideal platform for us to be able to test technology in this type of atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned payloads because in the news release, something that kind of caught investors' eyes was when we mentioned that the Procyon will be able to demonstrate delivery of payloads. Is package delivery and payload delivery something that the company is looking to establish? 
Yeah, it, it definitely is, but it, it, it's a, it's on a different type of model than, than what people typically think of for uh, for package and payload delivery. And we're not focusing on sort of the, the retail space for that in terms of, of uh, providing a model like DHL or Canada Post or, or FedEx. What we're doing is, is specific case scenarios, and we're looking at things like being able to shuttle emergency supplies, for disaster response areas and, and scenarios like this, which are more of a, a closed theater in terms of, of the places they'll be operating. So, so these are more public safety and uh, emergency response, disaster response type capabilities that, that we have quite a bit of interest for the system to operate in those scenarios. So, so adding and demonstrating its capability uh, in this realm will, will be quite useful. Well, thanks, Mike. I will leave it at that and try to keep this uh, conversation uh, fairly short, but I did want to add to our shareholders and investors, if you do have any specific questions that you would uh, like to ask Mike uh, in these CEO interviews, feel free to ask those questions on our new 8020 Connect profile. You can find that online at 8020connect.com, and uh, we'll take into consideration some of those questions and uh, try to address those and the upcoming CEO interviews we have here. So, uh, Mike, I'll let you go. Again, I'm Trevor Hall, Marketing Director for Global UAV, and uh, Mike Burns, CEO of the company. Uh, Mike, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Trevor. It was a pleasure.